In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Google Forms along with the filter tool in Google Sheets to manage my classroom library. Basically, students complete this Google Form anytime they want to check out a book. And then every so often, I open the checkout data in Google Sheets and I use the filter tool to perform a little spreadsheet magic. To get started, you'll just need to open Google Forms, which you can do from your Google Drive by going to forms.google.com or you can start a new form from scratch by going to forms.new. So right now I'm in the editing window of my Google form. You can see that I just added a few simple fields to make the checkout process as painless as possible. And I do like to have separate fields for first and last name, as well as a drop down for each class period. And then of course the book title and the author are here. Then at the bottom, I just added a quick little checkbox for students to indicate that they have read and understand the proper procedures for using our classroom library. All of these fields were created with these icons right over here. So if you're not familiar with using Google Forms, this bar contains pretty much everything that you'll need. You'll also want to make sure to select the required toggle right over here if it's not already selected. And if you're wondering how I added this GIF up here, I do have a video on my channel that can walk you through that, so I will link that in the video description. Once students are ready to return their books, they place their book in a little bin near my desk. So here is a photo from my Instagram feed a little while ago. I do want to mention that I used to have students return books directly to the shelves, but it made cross-referencing the returns much more difficult. Now, every so often, I just grab the book return bin and I hop over to my Google Sheet. And this is where all of my Google Form responses live. So to access the Google Sheet for your form, you'll want to make sure that you're in the editing window. So right now I'm in the preview mode and I'm going to click on this icon right here that says edit this form. And you can see this is where I created my questions, but over here you will see a tab called responses. Then to launch my sheet, I'm just going to click on this little icon right over here, and it is going to open up all of my responses in Google Sheets. Once you've launched the sheet for the first time, I recommend bookmarking it by clicking on this little star right over here. This will add an icon to your bookmarks bar and allow you to directly access the sheet without having to go into your drive first. And since this is also a little bit of a longer title, I can shorten it by right mouse clicking, going back to edit, and then shortening the title. And now if it's nicely right here. The first time you come into your Google Sheet, I recommend hiding this column right here if you have something similar. This is a required field, so it's not really relevant. Everyone has to check it in order to submit the form. So I'm going to right mouse click and then select hide column. And then I'm just going to add a new column and title it returned. And just as a personal preference, I always like to take a moment to adjust the formatting a little bit. So I like to change the font and the column size and things like that. So if you want to know more about some of the basic formatting tools in Google Sheets, make sure to check out the first video in my Teacher's Guide to Google Sheets series. The last thing I need to do to set up my spreadsheet is create a filter. And I'm going to do that in my returned column. So I'm just going to click on column H and then I'm going to come up here to data and then create a filter. And this is going to enable this little funnel right over here, which we will come back to in just a moment. Now, every so often, I'll just grab the book bin by my desk and I'll place an X next to books that have been returned. So for demonstration purposes, let's just say that all of these books have been returned. And if you need to, let's say you have a lot of data and you can't really find the book title quickly, you can also use Control F. So on my keyboard, if I just click Control F and then I type in a book title, it will actually highlight and automatically toggle me to that particular area, which makes finding information in a large spreadsheet much easier. Now I'm going to use the filter that we created to eliminate all of the rows containing an X. So I'm going to click on this little icon right here. And now you can see that it gives me a few different options for how I want to filter the data. But for our purposes, I'm just going to uncheck this little X right here. Now I'm basically telling it to only leave the blank rows. So when I click OK, you can see that all of the X's have disappeared and I am only left with the books that have not yet been returned. 
this makes it really easy for me to see at a quick glance where I'm at as far as my classroom and library inventory, and I can follow up with students as needed. Now, let's say it's a month down the road and I am ready to check some books back into my library. I'm going to basically repeat the same process. I will place an X next to the books that have been returned. And then I'm just going to come right back up to my filter. Not really gonna make any changes. I'm just going to select okay. And it retains the original filter. So basically I create the filter once and then I am good to go the rest of the year. If you're interested in giving this a try, I'd love to hear from you. I also answered some frequently asked questions over on my blog, so if you want to check that out, I will link that in the video description for you. As always, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.